Hello, I'm currently working on a massive video on the topic of libertarian environmentalism, which I hope will come out sometime in March. In the meantime, I'm going to do a quickie on the topic of opt-out organ donation and why I think it's theft. This was prompted by a letter I received from NHS Scotland informing me of a change to this system. So strap in and enjoy. The argument goes as follows. Every man, woman and child owns themselves and all the organs in their body. It is abhorrent to suggest that you may assume someone's consent to make use of their property towards any end you may desire. To assume consent in the case of organ donation is logically equivalent to assuming a person's consent in sex. To say that you may implement an opt-out for giving your organs to a person is to say that you may implement an opt-out for people consenting to have sex with you. This is similar to Walsh's famous coconut analogy against voluntarism. Two people, A and B, are on an island. One night A collects all of the coconuts and tells B he must work for him if he wants to eat. The idea being that A should be obliged to give B coconuts, and to not do this is coercive. But if we imagine a separate, but also logically similar analogy, we may see the flaw in this thinking. Imagine that a person, C, has a disease where they will die if a woman does not have sex with them, and no woman wants to. If Vosh is correct that A may be compelled to give B his coconuts, then it must also be correct that C may oblige any woman he meets to have intercourse with him. The structure is identical after all. Feed me or I die versus fuck me or I die. In both cases, someone advocating a free society should be against the non-consenting action. The hypothetical can be further generalised as person 1 may compel person 2 to perform an action if the performing of this action would stop something that 1 does not want to happen. This obviously cannot be applied universally, or else 2 may simply compel 1 to not compel 2, as this would be something 2 does not want. We may continue this ad infinitum forever, never resolving to whether the action should or should not happen. Only in thinking some deserve more rights than others may you resolve this conundrum. One may protest that my prior argument that it is the same as rape doesn't hold as your organs are taken post-mortem, so you are unaffected, whereas rape happens very much pre-mortem. Okay, let's try to adjust our previous scenario to take this into account. It doesn't affect you to have a necrophile engage in intercourse with your corpse after your death. And if we make them pay money for charity, then we can even help save the whales or African children or whatever charity you like. In fact, we should engage in an opt-out system where a person must opt out from this great necrophile program. To draw your attention to how bad this is, imagine how many children might have the wherewithal to opt out. Heck, we could probably charge extra to the paedophile necrophile market. And it keeps them from raping alive toddlers. God bless our NHS our necrophile helping service. Moreover, to suggest that a dead person's consent does not matter is to abandon the entire institution of wills, to say that the instant a man dies his neighbours may walk in and take his house, as it would revert instantly back to nature sans a last will and testament. You may ask, well, where will we get all those organs from? Good question. Markets. We simply allow people to sell their organs and you will instantly see a boost in supply. The reason few donate is that there is little they get from it. If I could get a few hundred thousand from my corpse to leave to my family, I sure as hell would allow everything to be taken. I think most would. Organ donation is a classic distribution problem. Some have a massive oversupply of organs, namely the dead, and some have a massive undersupply. If we were to stop this amazing opportunity to acquire new organs with full consent for Puritan reasons that some feel it bad to sell organs, is it better for those Puritans that people's organs are simply taken without payment? How does that address one's concerns over an organ trade? Thank you for watching. If you have any concerns or questions, leave them in the comments below. Remember to like the video and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.